because of God's uniqueness, we often try to use analogies or similes to explain God's triune nature, but these will always fall short of the truth. I'm not saying you can't ever use some kind of analogy, but I'm saying it's probably not going to do what you want it to do. Uh, So, analogy, not recommended illustrations of the Trinity. The Trinity is like an egg. There's a shell, a yolk, and a white, but only one egg. But each part in this analogy is only one-third of the egg, and each person of the Godhead is 100% God. The egg is made up of parts that take up space, but God is immaterial and invisible. So you may say this and tell it to your little children's classroom. Oh, try to imagine it this way. And they may take that analogy for the rest of their life and start thinking of strange things because they'll try to, try to understand God through an analogy when God is actually presented the way he wants to be understood in the Bible, right? And God didn't mention an egg in the Bible. If God wanted to mention an egg in the Bible to tell his trinity, he certainly could have. And in his all wisdom, he decided not to, right? What he decided to tell us is what we find in the pages of Scripture. Also, another illustration, the Trinity is like H2O. The same thing can be vapor or water or ice, three in one. But God is all three at once. And, and, and water is not in the form both of ice and water and also gas, the same all in one place in one person. Also, the three persons of God cannot change into the other, right? So the water analogy, you have water freezes and becomes ice, but... God the Father does not become the Holy Spirit. God the Son does not become God the Father. So this presents illustration points that don't actually work for God. The Trinity is like a person. We also have three parts, body, soul, and spirit. But a person is one person. And God is three persons. And one of the three persons is the Holy Spirit, but it's not the same as a human spirit. These are really confusing things, but when you start doing it, you say, I've seen people backwork this analogy onto God and say, Okay, so which parts of God is the, is the body in which... I guess the Son's the body, right? And then the Holy Spirit, he's the Spirit. Well, wait, or is God the Father the Spirit? Because it says God is the Spirit. You're, you, you're trying to force an analogy onto God. God the Son is not a, a body. He took on flesh, but he's not an eternal body. And God, in all of his beings, is a spirit. And, so we're, and, and the spirit that he is is not a human spirit because God is not a man. So you're really confusing things when you just use these analogies. Illustrations of the Trinity are more likely to lead a person into a false understanding of the Trinity than a true one. We can explain earthly things by comparison to other earthly things, but the best way to explain God is by using his word. Making a false image of God in our minds with an inadequate illustration won't help us. Isaiah 40, 18, To whom then will ye liken God? Or to what likeness will you compare unto him? Right? What on the earth are you going to compare to God? Well, the answer to that question, as you find the frequent form throughout the Bible, is that You can't. You don't. And so why should we try to do that instead of try to present God as God has presented himself to us? And finally, number nine.